This is an introduction to regression with Python. We're going to go through a couple different examples here, just show you them and then work through one particular one with multiple linear regression. But there are many other types of linear or nonlinear regression. Here's an example of linear regression. All right, with a couple other examples there. If you'd like to learn about nonlinear regression, if your model is nonlinear, such as this form, you can use nonlinear regression if you know the equations. If you don't know the equations, but you just have data, you can use Gaussian process regression. So it's a probabilistic model, uh, it's a non-parametric as well. So you have to store the data. All right, and then KNRS neighbors is also non-parametric, instance-based learning. You also have neural network regressors and support vector regressors. This one is a parametric model. But again, you don't need to necessarily know the form of the model. Uh, XGBoost regressor is a tree-based classifier uh, that's been converted into a regressor as well. Okay, so all of those are options. Uh, we're going to go through an example here of just this uh, multiple linear regression with an additional constraint to, uh, to be able to demonstrate some of the predictive capabilities of this model using two independent variables. So those are things that you can measure and then a dependent variable so you have measurements for that as well we'll have a linear equation a constraint and then also an objective function so let's go ahead and just jump right into this problem right here i'm going to just describe this in just a little bit more detail okay so we're given some data all right and this could be a very large data set um, and uh, here's our linear model all right, we're going to have three coefficients, C0, C1, and C2. And so those are going to be adjusted. Uh, their values are going to be adjusted to minimize this objective function right here. So these are the measured values, and here we have the predicted values. So we can see measured and predicted. This is a parity plot, and the best solution would be one where it fits right along this 45 degree slope line. And you can see that we have some inaccuracies here. Okay, so some deviation, and that is going to be our error that we're gonna to try to minimize. But we're not just gonna minimize the error, the absolute value of the error, we're going to square it. Okay, so minimize the sum of squared errors. But we also have one other constraint here and this is a type of constraint that we might use to say the sum of all of these terms times our our data uh, that one has to be between 0 and 10 maybe we have some additional information like some type of uh, physics based constraint or other type of information regarding the problem where we want to enforce these additional constraints now this fortunately is also a linear constraint but let's go just program this up in Python. All right, so I'm gonna go to um, this iMode 3 first. Okay, this is in Python Gecko. So I'm gonna just first of all import NumPy and also import Gecko. And then we're gonna load some of our data, x1, x2, and then our measured values. So those are the three that we had right there at the top with our data. And then we're going to get a length n. Let's go ahead and create our model. We're going to create a gecko model. And we'll create our three C0, C1, and C2 values. Okay, so for each of those, we're going to turn their status on, meaning that we want it, the solver to calculate those. And then we're also going to create uh, the predicted values. We're going to create an array of length n. So one prediction for every measurement row that we have. All right, so for each of these, we're gonna create an equation and then also minimize the difference between the predicted and the measured value. And then we're also gonna add a constraint on the sum of C1 times X1. So let's go ahead and put that as variable S and we're gonna constrain that between zero and 10. Just like we had down here, there you can see zero and 10. This is going to be our S variable. 
Okay, so there's our equation, s equals c1 times sum x1. And then we're going to use i mode 3. And I'll talk a little bit more about the modes of operation in Gecko in just a little bit. We're going to solve it and then print the final objective and get our solution as well for c0, c1, and c2. And then let's go just plot the solution as well. Okay, so if I open up a command terminal and I'll just go to desktop and do python imode3.py, it's going to run this with the IPOP solver and there you can see our minimized solution. So you can see the summation of these three C1, C2, and C3, or sorry, C0, 1, and 2, uh, times X1, that's going to be between 0 and 10. Okay, so that's the first way to do it. Now, this uh, is common in many modeling languages where you have to define a separate equation for each data row. But I'm going to show you a more efficient way to do this in Gecko. And we're going to use something called iMode2, or um, this uh, mode of operation that's built specifically for regression. So here are the different modes that you can use in Gecko. And we have simulation, estimation, and control. And for each of these, we have uh, one through three. Those are going to be our no dynamics models. So no differential equations in the model. As we go to four through six, uh, we have some additional modes here. And these are going to be simulation. This is a simultaneous simulation, meaning that all of the collocation points are set up and solved simultaneously. And this one uh, down below iMode 7, that one's maybe a little bit faster, especially if you have a long time horizons. It does a sequential simulation. And then we have some other modes as well. And I'll just write these out. This one is commonly uh, described as MHE, or Moving Horizon Estimation. And then this one is MPC. And then these are the same down here, but we just solve those with a shooting method or a sequential method where it evaluates the equations and the objective functions uh, sequentially. Okay, so I typically prefer to use simultaneous when possible, but we're going to talk instead about um, you know these two over here on the right. So we just set this up in a way that described all of the equations. We're going to switch over now to iMode 2 and just show how it can be more efficiently compiled and, and solved with Gecko. And part of the reason for that is it's built for regression. And so you only have to define the equations once and then they are compiled into bytecode that's as efficient as writing the code in C or Fortran. And uh, you only have to evaluate many fewer expressions. Okay, so let's go to, um, let's see, I'm going to bring this one back right here. And let's go to iMode 2 now. So now we're going to solve this same problem that you saw before. But uh, let's go ahead and solve it in a more efficient way. Okay, so we're going to get Gecko. We'll load our data as we did before. And then we'll create our model, create our same C0, C1, and C2, and turn the status on for those. And then we're going to feed in the values of x1 into a new parameter called x1 and x2, and then also our measured value as well. And we'll also create another one that's going to be a variable. This is going to be a prediction. And then we only have to define our equation once. Because in iMode 2, it'll take each of these data values that you fed in there and basically copy the equation for each of those data rows. Okay, so we're going to add a constraint. Now, this one uh, is just a little bit uh, trickier. You have to use the vSum object, all right, in order to sum up over a vertical sum, meaning that you have to sum it up over the column of data. Okay, so I'm going to create new v1. And we're just going to set v1 equals c1 times x1. OK, and we're going to have our constraint. I'll call that c-o-n. And that's going to be between 0 and 10. 
and then our constraint equals m dot v sum v1. All right, so I just had to um, take my c1 times x1, create a new variable for that, and then here is my vertical sum over that column. Now I'm going to minimize the prediction minus the measure. Now you'll notice that I haven't indexed these. It automatically does that for you when you use iMode 2. All right, so I'll use iMode 2, solve it, and then print the final objective, and then our solution, and plot the values. Now you'll notice as well right here, we didn't have to uh, index those either, put them because they're returned as an array of values. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this one as well. Go to my desktop and imode2.py. So same solution that you had before, but just a little bit more efficient in terms of how it solved it and set it up. Okay, so that is an overview of regression. And I'll just give you a little bit of a, a demonstration of what we're going to do next. Um, so here are the here's the code if you want to grab those. Just make sure you use the git code down here to get the raw values. Now uh, there's also some gecko documentation on iMode. And then you can also see an introduction to dynamic estimation. So the next part is going to be using iMode 5 to be able to solve differential and algebraic equations, not just steady state relationships. So if you come here, you'll see examples 3 and 4. These show some gecko solutions using differential, not just algebraic expressions.